Greetings, YouTubers. Thanks for joining us here. We at TheGreatestSong.com were in search of the best audio interface for podcasting and voiceovers. We tested the following six popular interfaces. The Focusrite Scarlet 4i4. The Audient ID4. The SSL 2 Plus by Solid State Logic. The M Audio Air 192/4, the Universal Audio Apollo Solo, and the PreSonus Revelator IO24. For a detailed look, check out our complete review at thegreatestsong.com. The link is in the description of this video below. So let's get to it. First we have the Focusrite Scarlet 4i4. We reviewed both the 4i4 and the Solo. The Solo is pictured here, but the 4i4 is much, much more suited, better suited for podcasting and voiceovers. You will need the second input to have any guests and a guitar input on the Solo does you no good for podcasting. These are the most popular interfaces for a reason. Uh, its preamps are not as clean as the UA Apollo, but they definitely come close, and it's one-third the price. It's selling for about 240 uh, the 4i4 at the time of this review. We loved the way this thing sounds. Now, the positive points here are it has preamps that rival expensive interfaces. It comes at a great price. The zero latency option is really useful. The virtual channels for loopback of audio were self-explanatory and easy to use. It also works out on iPad Pro with a USB-C connection. The cons of this unit, uh, there weren't a whole lot of them. I mean, the first one, I guess you could say there's no MIDI input or output if you wanted to have a direct connection in that way and you didn't have a USB connection on your MIDI unit. Um, the display lights on this don't really help in setting the levels. They're just kind of fluff. Now we have the Audient ID4. Now the ID4 was competitive in our tests. The sound quality was solid. Not as clear as the Universal Audio Apollo, but very good nonetheless. The general ease of use was our favorite aspect of this machine. It plugged into my computer and worked immediately with my DAW. And the special ID buttons allow you to directly control knobs and levels in your DAW. It, it just kind of worked without any fiddling, which is great. It's priced around 200, which is also really nice. The general positives listed here, like we said, it's easy to use. It comes with a quality build and the knobs and levels all work as you would want them to. The virtual channels for internal loop back were self-explanatory. It works with any iOS device with a lightning or USB-C ports using iOS 6 and up. Now the cons for this, uh, there was only one XLR, which could be limited if you wanted to have a guest. There's no MIDI input or output, again, uh, if you had a keyboard or a MIDI drum unit or something that only had MIDI, uh, this you would be limited in this way. Next we have the SSL2 Plus by Solid State Logic. If you always wanted an SSL console in your home, well, here's your chance. It's worth noting that if you don't need the extra monitor output, extra headphone output, or the MIDI inputs and outputs, you can get the, the little brother of this unit, which is the SSL2. There's no plus. And that's about $100 cheaper. Uh, this unit was $300 at the time of the review. Now, the pros on this thing, it has really nice preamps. It's versatile. It had our favorite build and design. It's just, it's a nice size. Uh, it sits on the desk and everything kind of, if you're gonna have a separate unit, you may as well have knobs and lights that you can actually look at and use. 
This unit comes with two separate headphone outputs with independent volume controls on board. Now this is great if you do a two-person podcast where you need separate controls for everyone. This is all luxury compared to your standard units. The drawback to this unit we found for podcasting was that there were no loopback options included. Next, we have the M Audio Air, the 192-4. Now, this interface has the lowest price tag on this list, but sadly, it was not even worth that. Um, we heard good things about this, and we thought it would be worth to at least try out an interface around the $100 mark. This fit that bill, but it confirms what I already knew. Going cheap on an audio interface is really not worth it. Uh, the pros on this are it is inexpensive, and the cons, it uh, has poor sound quality from the preamps. There's a gain shelf jump from where it's super quiet, and all of a sudden it's just way too loud. That's really annoying if you're setting levels. And there were no loopback options included. Next, we have the Universal Audio Apollo Solo. This has the same exact specs and build as the Apollo Arrow, which is pictured here. It was just a rebranding on their part um, to name it the, the Apollo Solo. They just wanted one line. Now, in our opinion at thegreatestsong.com, the Universal Audio Apollo line interface, these are some of the best that you can purchase. Um, the sound quality is top-notch in every way. Now, for podcasters and voiceover artists, this unit paired with a quality mic gives you a truly professional-sounding result. The software driver allows for real-time, zero-latency monitoring. The pros on this unit, um, as we said, it's, it's one of the best you can buy. It's unrivaled in its sound quality from these preamps and digital converters. The zero latency option is fantastic if you start getting into multi-tracking and where you're taking up a lot of DSP from your computer. And uh, that's where this thing really jumps compared to the competition. It has outstanding plugins included. The virtual channels for loopback work as you would want them to. The cons are there is no cable included. Now this unit cost $700 at the time of this review. And for a unit that costs that much, I think they could give you a cable. As we said, yes, it's expensive and there's no MIDI uh, inputs or outputs if that is a deal breaker for you. Uh, finally, we have the PreSonus Revelator. I like the name, uh, IO24. Now this thing is marketed and designed to be a podcaster's dream device. PreSonus makes it easy to mix your sources and take colors from Zoom. And it's thought about all of these things. Priced currently at the time of this review about $200. The pros are it's a solid build. Loopback and streaming is made very easy with the audio driver software. It has intuitive LCD controls. The cons, however, and this is a big con, are the sound quality just kind of sucks. That was kind of a buzzkill after this was marketed as a podcaster's dream. Which was our pick at The Greatest Song? The winner goes to the Focusrite Scarlet 4i4. That's right, with two XLR inputs, uh, built-in loopback software, and crystal clear preamps, and a great price, this interface took the trophy for podcasting and voiceovers. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely have a listen to the audio tests that we do on all these interfaces at the full review listed in the description of this video. Huge thanks again for watching this video and for joining us at the greatest song.com.